Hey there, welcome back to Turntable Guy, the channel where we repair turntables and service them for customers who are having issues and or just want their turntables running good. Um, this is going to be a really good repair. Um, this here was just brought in. It is a lovely Techniques SL 1900. Um, this is a fully automatic. Um, pretty similar to the SLD3, except um, the controls here are more like the SL1300 and 1600. So, um, but it's, it's also very plasticky. So this deck is all what they call TNRS techniques, uh, non-resonance, resonance, something or another. Um, so I'm going to show you the issue with this table. Um, what we've got with this one, which is very common with this series, um, this series here gets very sticky grease inside the arm itself. So slide that lid off. So you can see right now it's, it's not sitting down on the armrest even though the cueing lever is all the way down. There's a little bit of travel, but if I push down on it, you can see there, there actually is travel. So what that's telling me is that the grease inside the arm is all gooey. So let's just uh, start it up and see what it does. Okay, it moves out to the correct record size. It's set for 12 inch, but as you can see, the arm is not going down. The arm should lower, and it's really fighting me. Speed pots are good though. No, uh, maybe not. No, speed pots. Oh yeah, it's all, it's, can you, oh, sorry. Can you see that? It's, uh, It was jumping around, probably just me moving it a little bit here has just restored the contact. Well, we'll give those a cleaning anyway. Um, so let's just see if it auto returns. And it does, kind of, yep. Yeah. It's auto returning, does it shut off? It does shut off. Okay, so looks like we've got a sticky arm. So let's, um, let me show you how to disassemble this particular series. Um, if you're looking at or asking what this is, this is one of those weird arm cleaner things that people put on here and it tracks. I think it tracks that way. I hate these things. I, I really don't believe they do anything. Just keep your records clean. Anyway, uh, I'm not taking it off. <clears throat> Let's show you how to do this. So uh, as with any techniques table, you're going to want to remove the platter. We're going to lock this arm down. As you can see, it's really fighting to stay down. Two fingers, pull up. There's your motor. Okay. Now, um, this table is a little bit different. Um, the the guts of the table is on the bottom, and this is the lid basically has nothing but these controls on it. So what you're going to want to do is pop this off. This is just a little cover. It comes off. It's a bit tough to get off, and it feels like that brittle plastic is going to crack on you, but it won't. And that, that gets your controls here. And now you can lift off these pot, pot covers here, the knobs, there we go. All right, if you don't, uh, if you don't take those off, you'll never get this, the, the table off. So the, the plinth is, like I said, the plinth can, has all the controls on it, and this is just like a cover. Okay, so next, what you're gonna wanna do is turn it on its side or, uh, okay, this is one of those times when we're going to pause. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen screws to remove on the bottom. 
So let's do what we always do. Let's pause the recording and we'll come back after that's done. Okay, turntable's back on its feet. Um, by the way, this one's got two broken feet on the left side here, so it's going to need new feet. I just uh, rotted away. Um, so the uh, 14 screws are removed. So what you're going to want to do now is remove your head shell. This has got an old Audio Technica, looks like AT12, I think. It's original stylus. Looks like it's freaking glued on there. We'll have a look at that later. Okay, so as you can see, the body here, the top of the plinth, is now ready for removal. So what you're going to want to do is grab your arm and just slide it over and then turn the table ever so slightly like that and pull it right off. As you can see, all that's uh, on this part of the uh, turntable is the uh, uh, controls for the repeat, the record size, and your start-stop switch. Um, the actual real controls are on the turntable itself. All right, so first thing we're going to do while we're here, we're going to um, spray some contact cleaner in these controls because I'm sure they're very filthy. Let's use some deoxit. from this side. I know I've got good penetration when uh, I shoot it and I see it come out of the uh, little holes here where the pot is. I know I've got, uh, I got enough in there. So once you got your uh, deoxit, work it back and forth. Yeah, these were very sticky. This uh, turntable also has uh, um, fine controls. Not that you'd probably need to touch those, they're set at the factory. And we'll just kind of set them there. Ideally, you'd want these centered and then adjust the fine controls. But we'll just leave them like that. Neutral on the switch. Like that. Okay. Now, we need to remove the arm because we need to turn it upside down to be able to see what's going on. Okay. So, there are usually three screws on techniques. One is here. One is here. And one is under this cap. So, just remove that cap screwdriver all the way down. Oh, even the anti-skating is gummed up. Yeah, this is going to be a mess. And there's your third. So now your arm will come up and it is still attached to the RCA cables. So there's a strain relief here and then you can just pull up on it and then you just set your arm to side because you have to remove this ground. There you go. Remove your ground, set the screw aside, and now you have your arm assembly. So now you can grab the actual turntable. And 
can put it on the floor because we're not going to need to get back in here for a little bit. Maybe not. Let's go down here. Oh, there we go. I gotta love wiring, eh? Grr. Okay, here is our arm. The inside of our arm. Here is the anti-skate. As you can see, this grease is completely gummed up. As I try to move the knob here, it won't even budge. It is so frozen. Ugh. Wow. I don't want to force it too much. Um, and here is the arm lift mechanism. This piece here controls the arm lift. Yuck. Gross, gross grease. So the arm, the arm lift wants to lift, but there's so much frozen grease in there that it won't. And just so you know, this is a very dirty job. So lots of alcohol and uh, paper towels, because you're going to need them. Okay, I guess the first thing I want to do here is I just want to spray some WD-40 just to loosen the grease a little bit. This is not a lubricant. This is for cleaning. I mean, it will lubricate for a little while, but it's not a long-term solution. But it's excellent for freeing up old grease. So I just want to spray that on. It's almost like a, a, a penetrating oil, right? So it's going to go in there and it's going to loosen this crap up. It just seems to, to eat old grease, which is great. And we're just going to spray some over here. Just on the spots where it looks greasy. We'll just let that work in a little bit. Yuck. I have to take this one apart. It's so gummed up. <sighs> this one's starting to move. Actually moved a little bit. Wow, is that ever frozen in place? We're going to have to take this one apart. We're just going to lower the arm all the way, which is right there. There we go. See now the arm, the arm actually dropped down which it hasn't before, and now it's now it's sitting on the armrest. Um, the auto, um, sorry, the uh, there's a spring here that keeps it loaded. You're going to have to remove that. So just want to remove that spring. Everything's either easier and said than done, eh? Okay, so there's your spring removed. It goes right around that hook. Now we're going to remove this mechanism altogether. One Phillips screw holding it in. If you're new to this kind of stuff, take a picture. I've worked on this stuff before, so I kind of know where everything goes. At least I kind of remember. That's pretty dirty. 
So what, hap what happens here is the grease actually freezes between the mechanism here and this bearing that it rides on. So you're going to need a flat screwdriver just to gently pry that up. Sometimes you can move it back and forth a little bit just to get it moving. Let's give a little bit of a cleaning here. Maybe the WD-40 will go in there a little bit better now. Soak in. There we go. There, now it's nice and loose. Perfect. But you can't leave it like that. Because like I said, WD-40 is not a lubricant. Great cleaner. There we go. Off she comes. And there's your mechanism. Okay? So just set that aside because we're going to clean this area here, which is horribly gross. Again, Little WD on there. You can use isopropyl alcohol as well. As you can see, we've got not only have we got bad grease, we've got oxidation as well. This one's really gummed up. What a mess! Time to crack open the alcohol. And you just want to clean that really nice. Try to get all that oxidation off. There's lots of green stuff on there. And let the alcohol dry up, so that's clean. Set that aside, we're going to work on this piece now. There is a small gasket here that needs to be cleaned as well. Okay, alcohol. Clean both sides of it. It's actually like a, almost like a slip mat for it. It'll keeps it uh, moving nicely. Okay, so clean that with alcohol. Okay, set it aside. And then time to clean this entire mechanism here. There's the gross grease. On the inside. Top side. Okay, it should start moving nicer now. As you can see there, it's got good spring action now. If you pull this out, just remember, I'm just going to spray some WD in there, actually, where it goes. Okay. It sits inside that slot. I do want to get some alcohol in there. All around us. And let that dry.
kind of a weird setup here. This is going to have the spring has to come around and this has to snap over like that. They have to snap into each other like that. But you also want to get a lubricant in there, right? So the question becomes, what do we want to use? Well, I'm going to use something that's not detrimental to plastic. And that is just a little bit of uh, synthetic grease. It's not a white grease. Don't use a lithium grease. It actually creates more friction on plastic to plastic, I find. So just a little bit of synthetic grease. And we're just going to put it around here. And this stuff will not go bad. So again, we gotta, we gotta wrap this around. The spring has to extend out like that, and then snap in like that. Okay. There we go. Moving nicely. All right. So that's that part. Now, grab your white gasket. And I like to put just a little bit of grease on both sides. Just smear it on like you're buttering toast. I'll we'll do that side first. We're going to put it in the arm on that part there. Slide her down. Okay. And then grab a little more. And lubricate this part. You don't need a ton of it. There we go. Now, you can slide this back in. And look how it's moving now. No problems. Okay. Your retaining screw here is also full of old grease. So just like everything else, just clean it off. And you can put it back in. Oops. Ugh. Great. Okay, so now you can put your spring back. Okay. And I will guarantee you that this arm will go up and down now. And if you look. Up she goes, down she goes. It's still got good uh, silicone action on it. Up, down. Beauty. Okay, lock your arm back in place. Take your head shell off. We still have our anti skate issue. Let's see if that. Wow, these are really bad. Let's uh, let's take that apart. I hope it's not broken, because sometimes someone may have forced it and actually broken it. I've seen that happen. 
I'm hoping it's just sticky grease. It looks like it's sticky grease. Yuck. Oh yeah, it's really bad. This 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 is probably one of the worst arms I've ever seen, actually. It's so bad it's turned to, to a crust. Let's see now. There we go, see? That's moving. We're just going to lift that off as well. Get some uh, alcohol. Clean that off. Look at that. It's, it's horrible. Absolutely horrible. I think I need to start charging people for Q-tips. I go through so many. I've, I've never seen grease turn to glue like this before. Look at this. It just, it, it's, it's so crusty. It's actually hard. And not hard as in a gooey way. It's, 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 like, it's like the glue that they use on capacitors that, that turns rock hard after it's subjected all that heat. Except there's no heat in this part of the turntable. So it's very surprising. Wow. Okay. I'm actually going to use a razor blade to get this off. This is a little finicky. You have to hold the uh, anti-skating knob while trying to hold this down too. 
and then try to get the screw in. There we go. Okay, I just want to see if it's kind of, yep. So there you can see the spring moving, pulling the anti-skate weight. Okay, and it kind of goes back and forth. So before we tighten that screw down any further, we're gonna apply some, uh, some grease on there. And I think this area could use a fairly healthy dose. Just uh, generally, give it a general area lubrication, apply it liberally. Over the plastic parts, the back side, underneath. And do this side. Okay, that's good. And tighten it down. Look at that. It's not nice. I cannot believe how frozen that was. Usually when I spray some WD-40 in there, it loosens up the grease just enough for me to get it moving. But uh, not that time. Okay. So now I'm going to show you how to put the arm back on because it can be a little tricky. Let's just clear this off. Get this gross stuff away. Put your arm aside. Grab our table. Turn it this way. relief has to go in facing up like this now uh, here let's put the arm in place first uh, here's your three holes one two and three so the arms gonna want to drop in there sometimes there's a piece that's in the way it's right here so this has to fit in here. Sorry, this. Did I point at this? I don't remember. This has to fit in there. There we go. Okay. It's attached. So now you can start reattaching your arm. Screws, so one, one down the big hole here with the cap, put your cap back, and one over here, and that's it, okay, don't forget your ground. That the arm's back. Okay. Now, turn the table back. Let's 
grab your main your top here, main part of the plant. Move your arm over, okay? Slide that over like that, and then turn. And it should sit nice and flat. See, now the arm is sitting in. Just to make sure. Down, up, perfect. Lovely. Now my hands are filthy and I'm getting grease all over this. So I'm just gonna take a quick break here, wash my hands and then we can finish buttoning it up. All right, so we've got our, uh, we got our turkey back together here. Um, I have uh, put the 14 or so screws back in the bottom. I was going to check for sound, but um, I've noticed that the stylus has absolutely no diamond left on it. So I'm not going to obviously put that on my record. Um, we set our speed here. Again, it's just a matter of you know, having a look at your, uh, at your strobe and then adjusting your 33 and your 44 or your th 33 and your 45 to, to compensate. Uh, just about there. 33. I really hate these thumb things. They just, it's nicer to get where you can put your finger on it. 45 is good. Uh, mechanism works. Here's your stop. And your reject. I am not going to set up the arm because he may want to go with a new cartridge. So we'll wait and to see what he wants to do there. Auto return does work. It lifts at the perfect spot, about halfway through the dead wax. That's it. Anti skating is really nice. Anyway, so that's how you repair greasy stuck arm on a techniques where your uh, 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 record lift is not working okay so if you're if your record lift if you go to lift it and it's not going up or down you've got a greasy uh, mechanism and it needs to be completely disassembled cleaned and uh, fresh grease applied okay so that's it for this episode uh, hopefully we'll uh, talk again soon and uh, thanks for watching Bye-bye.